Christianity spread through violence and slavery. Now, anytime I bring that subject matter up, the overwhelming consensus from some black people who want to hang on dear to Christianity, they start talking about the Ethiopian Bible and they'll make the claim that the oldest complete Bible is the Ethiopian Bible. And therefore, Christianity was in Africa long before it was in Europe and it did not come through slavery since Ethiopia was never conquered by any other nation. What people who bring this out lack is critical thinking and understanding history. So let's take a little journey, if you will. First about the Ethiopian Bible. The Ethiopian Bible is one of the most complete Bibles that we have. But the Ethiopian Bible came from the Codex, the Codex Sinaiticus. Now, although the Codex Sinaiticus is broken up into parts, this is why they make the claim the most complete Bible. But when you complete a Bible based on the Codex Sinaiticus, then that means that the Codex Sinaiticus was older and originated the Ethiopian Bible. And the Codex Sinaiticus could have made its way which, let me explain first, if you don't know the Codex Sinaiticus is, during the time that Ptolemy IV controlled Egypt, uh, he had the Masoretic text converted over into Koine Greek, and then after the Masoretic text was put in Koine Greek, and the New Testament letters were written, the New Testament letters were written in Greek as well, and so those all become the Codex Sinaiticus. Now, when the Codex Sinaiticus was in Egypt in the first century, so they want to claim that Christianity was in Africa, they should start with that it was in Egypt, but of course we know that this was with the Coptic Christians of Egypt, and the Coptic Christians were then, for the most part, uh, ruled out when the, when the Nicene Creed was done and the uh, organization of Christianity under the Orthodox occurred, and which begins the Roman Catholic Church. So the Coptics didn't hold a lot of weight, so therefore people don't like to weigh in on the Coptics, and we will do a video about them uh, soon. So the Sinaiticus could have possibly came into Ethiopia, then known as the Axum Empire, at, in and around the same time that it went to Egypt, but it was not the religion of the Axum Empire. So it's possible, but there's exactly, there's no zero data to suggest that Christianity was in Egypt, in Ethiopia, sorry, during the first century or the second century or even the third century. The only data that we have is that in the fourth century, around 330, that uh, a priest from the Coptic church in Egypt came and introduced Christianity to the Axum Empire and then converted the Axum Empire, uh, King Azana, into Christianity around 330, making Axum the state, making Christianity the state religion of the Axum Empire, which later becomes Ethiopia. But even that does not establish them as the first Christian nation, which is another claim that they like to make. In all actuality, the first Christian nation was the Armenian, uh, the state of Armenia, which is nestled between south of Georgia, uh, east of Turkey, and north of Iran. So nestled in that spot, the Armenians were the actual first country to declare themselves a Christian country, beating the Axum Empire by about 29 years. So therefore, they weren't even the first Christian nation. Now, they like to say that Christianity entered Africa before it entered Europe, but what they fail to realize is that Christianity did became a state religion of the Axum Empire and not the Roman Empire. Uh, it, became a, it became their religion in the Axum Empire state religion before it became the religion of the Roman Empire. That does not mean Christianity did not enter Europe prior to that. If you would just say that, then you have to get rid of all the Christian persecution to which occurred in the Roman Empire throughout Europe. For one, when you look at the persecution in Lyon. Um, this is in well, modern day Lyon, France, where you had persecution by Domitian in France in 
177. And this persecution lasted until the mid 200s CE. So therefore, there were Christians in France. And there had to be Christians in France in order to persecute those Christians in the same way that they had to be Christians in Rome for Nero to have blamed the fire of Rome on Christians. And that was first century CE. And since y'all like to tout out Titus and Tacitus as a historian, it is, it is primarily the historian Tacitus that wrote about the fire in Rome under Nero in 64 CE. Therefore, in order for there to be Christianity in Rome to be blamed, Christians to be blamed in Rome, you kind of got to have Christians in Italy at that time frame. So therefore, Christianity was in Rome. It was in France prior to it ever coming to the Axiom Empire. And as far as a codex of Bible, the Armenian Bible dates to around 425 CE, which the uh, which does put them later as far as having a canon and closing their canon. But the oldest Bible that you have from the Ethiopians were not found until uh, the 1500s. But of course, we make the assumption that that is a copy of what they had back in 330. Now, the thing about Ethiopia and understanding the world, Ethiopia never being conquered, never being colonized, would be able to maintain their religion without the influence of other places. Whereas the Roman Empire, it took them time and they were influencing over everyone else's. And I'm going to get deeper into that in the next video. One of the other things that we have to bring to bear here concerning the Ethiopian Bible is the story concerning Sheba, the Queen of Sheba, going to be with Solomon and them having a child. This is something that they will also tie out to say that Judaism was in Ethiopia prior to um, Christianity. And they would also talk about the eunuch that was met on the road. Now, as I said, is it possible that there were Christians in Ethiopia? It's possible. Were there Jews in Ethiopia? It's possible. But there's absolutely no data that supports those claims. The eunuch was simply something that was made up only in your Bible. And there's no proof of it. And according to Acts, this eunuch then came and converted the royals into it. But yet the royals remain outside of Christianity until 330. The math just ain't mathing. But where does this story come from? In the 13th century, you had a manuscript that was created called the, and I'm going to say it wrong, the Kibra Nagesh. <laughs> so the Kibra Nagesh was a 13th century creation in around the 1200s that told the story of Queen Sheba going up and meeting Solomon and them not only come, having a love affair, but producing a son named Menelik and that Menelik uh, then later on, when he came of age, went to visit his father, Solomon. Solomon wanted him to stay there, but he chose to go back home to his country. And then um, there are two variations. Either Solomon gave him the Ark of the Covenant or some of Menelik's friends stole the Ark of the Covenant, flew it on a magic carpet and arrived in the Axiom Empire. And this is the story to which... Um, people have believed is how Judaism and then later Christianity comes into Egypt prior to the Axiom Empire. The problem with those stories is that there's absolutely no data that supports it. This is also why there is a church in Ethiopia that claims they have the Ark of the Covenant because it's based on this story, but there's absolutely no proof that the Ark of the Covenant is there since only one person is ever allowed to go in there and they're usually an old man and he's chosen once he's an old man and they usually die within three years and people try to say that it's because of radiation that's coming from the Ark of the Covenant. We have no idea since no one is allowed to go inside there. If you want to hide it, then you must have something to hide. But this story um, is also how the Rastafari came about because they utilized this story to say that um, that they came from Menelik the first, but there is absolutely no data that suggests that Menelik the first ever existed. As a matter of fact, this story about Sheba is just a story that the Kibra uh, took from the idea of the Songs of Solomon 
and this woman from the south coming and visiting Solomon because she wanted to know his knowledge. And so they made the Queen of Sheba to be that woman. And this is just a literary creation in itself. So we really need to stop and understand what this codex is saying and what this history is saying before you start making the claims because Christianity certainly conquered.